Okay, how are you going? It's uh, Wednesday, the... This is not Wednesday. It's Tuesday, the 28th of December, 2021. And in this video, I'll be dealing primarily with situations going on between Russia and NATO, and also the Chinese side effect to that, or the other prong to this, the other part to this equation. Um, so recently in a video, I talked about why I believe Russia is the king of the north because of the old Roman Empire and the, in particular, the Seleucid Empire, which was the um, eastern arm of the Roman Empire, well, prior, pre, um, uh, Greek, uh, post-Greek, pre-Roman, um, Seleucid Empire that developed into the, um, eastern leg of the Roman Empire in Constantinople. And if in the last days the image stands up again, we expect that Rome will stand again, or, yeah, that, that power will stand. The whole system, with everything incorporated, Babylon as the head, its religious thinking system pervades through all of history right up till now, and all the other systems have gained from that head in their body to the point we're at now with the legs, which are a mixture of clay and iron, which I believe is a mixture of clay being flesh or just, you know, people, <clears throat> democracy, and also um, the remainder of the Roman Empire being the iron which we see through all the architecture and we know that um well those in the know know that all roads lead to rome now and so rome is steering this through a guise of democracy or the three frog-like spirits spoken of in revelation which are liberty equality and fraternity for rome for the image of nebuchadnezzar to stand up before yahushua hamashiach destroys it, that stone cut without hands, destroys it at its feet. It must, again, occupy um, the modern-day modern, modern day Turkey or Constantinople. It must, it must, again, or Istanbul, sorry, it must, again, occupy that, that place. And so what we expect to see is that Russia will move down into Turkey and take Turkey as part of its empire. And at the moment, why I'm coming to about this is because there's been new news regarding the hostility between Turkey and Russia. Even though they play together and, and, and Turkey plays with NATO too, because Erdogan, the Turkish leader, he wants to re-establish a caliphate Islamic Caliphate. So he's trying to play it for his own advantage. And he, he, you know, anyone who does that cannot come off and win at the end of the day. And he's starting to upset the Russians when they're already pretty upset at the moment anyway. Um, so, well, I mean, like I said, this is, besides, look, I know it's, I say it's all theatre, and Turkey will play along too with the whole um, Pan and Dem and Ik. But at the same time, individual leaders still have their own ideas, like Putin does. He, I mean, he had himself made up in the bust of a, as a Roman emperor. He sees himself as the new leader of the world. And well, maybe the the world that China doesn't occupy. <laughs> they've, they've just made closer relations to work together, by the way, and that, that's what I was something I was going to talk about coming up. But so what Turkey's done, Turkey has said that Russia, because Russia has put pretty much unilateral demands on, um, on NATO that they withdraw to pre-Soviet Union um, 
expansion um, points before they expand further east. And um, and NATO's Jans, whatever his name is, Stoltenberg, I think his name is, has said basically no. Um, but they're buying time and they've asked for another meeting with Russia on January 12th, which, which Russia has fobbed off at so far. Uh, while it continues to move troops. But I'm getting a bit ahead of myself because I'm, I haven't finished with the Turkey situation. The The good book also says in Revelation that <clears throat> the power of the uh, river Euphrates must dry up. And this is what we've seen, a dry up of the Ottoman Empire to the point where it's, it's drying right up... Um, you know, the Euphrates, the power system of the Ottomans um, out of Constantinople is now drying up to the point where they're going to be overrun soon. Now, by by Russia, and we so we expect to see that tension. I mean, Yahushua could return before this happens because for the image to stand up and make its move into the Holy Land, the saints must be already judged by then. But before that is the tribulation with all the, um, you know, the mark and that, that's that's what we're coming into now. But Yahushua could return at any point in this to gather his saints to be ready for a Russian invasion of, of Israel. Um, Ezekiel 38. Now, so Turkey is playing both sides they, so they've annoyed Russia by saying that Russia should play along with NATO and not expect so much. Um, and Turkey has also upset Washington recently by purchasing advanced combat systems from Russia. Um, so the US has put sanctions on it regarding that. And there's been previous US-Turkey um, problems over the last couple of years. Uh, anyway to the point where Turkey might have been kicked out of NATO. So, um, I think that's pretty much all I want to say about the the Russian annoyance with Turkey over what it said. And so Erdogan's playing, playing a game where he's got really no friends trying to establish Islamic caliphate against the will of Yahuwah. So he's ultimately going to annoy Putin that much that Putin will say, look, you know, you wouldn't even, you'd have massive troubles on your doorstep if, if I wasn't stepping in in Syria and you're annoying me now, so, I'll, you know, something like that. I mean, to, to, uh, Russia views the Hagia Sophia as part of its, I mean, Putin's made statements about that, or the Russians have made statements about that in the last two years that they view the Hagia Sophia, which has recently been turned back into a Muslim a Muslim, a Muslim site, um, it sees it as its own, as as Christian, you know, because Russia is the, you know, originally Imperial Rome merged into um, the Rome that became a religious Rome. And so, um, you know, Russia sees itself as Christian, as Rome does, they're about as on the same level, I mean, as um, real Christianity goes. But anyway, um, oh, an interesting note on that, that uh, Krill, the Russian Orthodox leader, and uh, Jorge, what's his name? Bergoglio, Bergoglio the um, Jesuit Muppet that's running, um, he's the Papa. He, uh, they just met they're talking, and the papa's doing trips all around Europe at the moment, talking too, making making arrangements for this upcoming Depop war. Anyway, I got a bit sidetracked there. Um, <clears throat> so Russia, a couple of days ago, I don't know if I reported, I might have mentioned that Russia moved ten thousand of its troops away from the Ukrainian war border. Well. U.S.'s military um, intelligence has come back and since said that that's just part of their 
rotating troops and um, also um, gosh, charges overheating the, the phones. So, um, so that the 10,000 troops was just part of like them rotating troops in readiness and also was basically part of a bit of um, distraction or almost like uh, to create some uncertainty. Um, but in the meantime, Russia continues to grow and build up its Ukrainian um, border presence to the point where the US is flying spy, spy planes over Ukraine in, with invasion fears. And the UK has also drawn up contingency plans to get all the British out of, um, out of Ukraine. Um, so a, Euro, a, a Russian invasion into Ukraine sounds highly likely at this stage. And it seems that they're waiting for the ground to freeze over um, and attack in January. Something else that um, highly indicates this is RT put out a report that said that Ukraine um, may actually attack Russia at the behest of the West to blame Russia in the end for attacking by February 22. Now we know that the Russian graves, the leaked document of the Russians getting ready for graves for Russians because of an upcoming war, a legal document has, um, has its plans to be finished by February. So it sounds like there's an attack coming in January when the ground freezes over. It's easier for the Russians to move their tanks in. We know also with the the weather that they're making for the, the dark winter. Yes, dark winter. <laughs> that there's gonna that this is gonna be um, probably colder earlier than normal, and um, because the north will be affected by a huge amount of snow because of weather manipulation, but not to get sidetracked again. Um, expect it probably soon within January, especially because NATO has given them to the 12th and Russia's just snubbed them um, to come to the table while they continue to build up. And the US is also building up. Russia's complaining a bit about that on RT, that the US has um, just sent um, to the Ukrainian border 10,000 um, combat instructors or military instructors for the for the forces that are fighting for Ukraine there and at plus 4,000 embedded US soldiers at least um, so it looks highly likely that this is going to it looks like they're just getting all their pieces in 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 order completely a eh? like they've just gone yep looks like we need to go ahead with this let's do all this we get it together by a certain amount of time to time up with the whole squirts and everything um so on the in the meantime the theater uh is being um further <laughs> portrayed on stage or whatever by um nato wanting to fast track Swinland, Swinland and Sweden, <laughs> Finland and Sweden into NATO in opposition to obviously Russia's um, what they've said about any further eastward ex expansion, and Russia has said that it will have serious implications that won't left, be left unanswered. So the constant beating of the war drums is going on now. We've had Sergei Ryakov, the uh, Deputy Foreign Minister of Russia, speaking in war tones, saying we're at a point where diplomacy will pay a subordinate role. Sergei Lavrov, the um, Foreign Minister for Russia, has said he doesn't rule out the West plotting a small war in Ukraine, and uh, also has said he's not bluffing um, in their, uh, their threats if, if, if NATO don't pull out. And, and guarantee Russian security. So then we come to the Chinese side of things. Gosh, I'm already at 14 minutes. I'm not even up the hill. Maybe I should take a drive up there um, and up, upload because it's quicker up near the 
the tower, fun, funnily enough. My, my reception dropped here as soon as they started amp, amping up the ads for the whole get a new Hi5 phone. And now, if I go up near the Hi5 tower, I got mad reception. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I've seen the phones that are supposed to be high fives, you know, the new ones, pulled apart by a technician saying they're no different than the four ones, the four G-banger ones. G-banger. <laughs> Gosh. News with, news with crudeness. <laughs> G-banger. Can't believe I said that. Anyway, all you US people won't know what a G-banger is. I won't be calling it 5G banger anymore. Um, a a G-banger is a thong. And the dogs are fighting next door. So anyway, back to task at hand. So China has threatened that the US better watch out how they play things and cautiously, cautiously manage the situation as China will not lose a, a, any Cold War. And meanwhile, Russia and China have just pledged to work closer militarily. Look, it's no, it's no mystery. Uh, Japan's Ministry of Defense has said that Chinese forces and aircraft have been around the island of uh, Okinawa on the 26th of um, December. And also, um, China, I'm not China, US and Japan have made further deals to use independent islands as US attack bases in as a contingency plan for any Taiwan issue, which is expected obviously. And and further to that, they've made financial agreements that the um, 50,000 odd US troops stationed in Tokyo will be kept on at an increased cost, a much higher cost to um, the Japanese at 9.2 billion. Um, and that's it. That's it for the news. Um, I just saved uh, 17 minutes and I, I just fitted an hour and 40 minutes worth of video watching into it. <laughs> so I'm doing you a favor. Anyway, if you really want to go and watch all that, no, nah, I can't be bothered putting the links. I don't need, if you don't believe me, don't listen to me. But I just took the information off um, a couple of other channels that I, I follow and I saved you all, you all about now 20. <laughs> Plus you got to like, I don't know, look at my head and go, man, look at how ugly that dude is. I, I feel better about my own self now. Um, look how lonely he is and uh, desperate for attention he is that he keeps uploading all day and I just sit here and I don't even comment and I just get all the news for free and feel better about myself. So there you go. <laughs> I just wanted to waste more time so I just take about four hours to upload this thing. I think I might go for a drive. Anyway, see ya.